Good morning, everyone. This is Kelly Hobart from Apaca Direct, and I'm here on Technique Tuesday with you. So I hope you guys are all doing well and staying warm. It's kind of cold outside. And this week, I'm going to be talking about a dog sweater. I, um, I, when it gets cold like this, I put sweaters on my dogs. And so I had this pattern that I had kind of written down, um, but it wasn't fully put into a pattern, really. It was sort of like my notes. And so I spent some time this week and worked on that pattern. So you, you guys will have it and you can give it a go. So I wanted to um, show you my little sweater that I did. And this is for Chloe and it's got hair on it from my kitty cat, Max. <laughs> And it has a cuff and here's the leg openings. I could actually put little, um, knit some legs on it if I wanted to, but um, I haven't done that yet. And this is wonderful yarn. It's called Dos Tiras. And it's a 50-50 blend of alpaca and wool. And I really, really like that. It's by Malabrigo. The colorway of it, this color is not alternated. It's all one solid piece. And if you look at it, you can't see any color pooling and it looks really beautiful. And I know a lot of you out there, as we're going along, don't forget to let us know where you're from, what you're working on. Maybe if you're working on a pattern or something that you like or want to share with us, that's great as well. Also, every week we have a giveaway. And for this last week, we had some Knit Cole yarn, and we had a choice between the Seahawks colorway and then this lovely little kind of tealish colors. And I think you guys chose the. Seahawks it was close, colorway. actually. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty close. So the the winner will get the Seahawks colorway this week, and then I am going to be this week's prize. For our new yarn is called um, Dos Tierras and it's by Malabrigo. It's a hand painted yarn and it's 50% merino, 50% baby alpaca. And I love this yarn. That's what I made this out of. It's Dos Tierras. And I made it out of just one skein and I have a little bit left over. And I was thinking, if I brought some of Bentley's. Bentley is my four pound Maltese. Here's a picture of it. He's so cute. He's kind of a bossy little Maltese, but he's my Ben Ben. Um, I brought some of his sweaters and I wanted to show you. Hey, everyone's coming online. So, hi everyone. Harry it's nice and to have Susan you. and oh, Debbie. Wonderful. And yeah. It's nice to have all of you with us. And I'm, I brought some of my sweaters out of the drawer that I use on Ben. And I know a lot of you out there like to use um, washable yarns and all that. Um, I don't, I, I don't mind hand washing my sweaters. Um, these sweaters are as old as Ben is. They're about um, 10 years old. And you can see they look beautiful. And you can see the ribbing on the tummy here and all the way up to the top. And then they have little leg openings. And they have straps for the legs and straps here on this one as well. This is by Tanner and Dash. I think all three of them I bought out of a pet shop in Petaluma that is a very high-end pet shop. And I really enjoy these sweaters on Ben. They're, this one is um, it's a blend of Angora and wool and a few other things, but they're nice and warm on him. And you can see they stay beautiful. All I do is if they get dirty, I'll just soak them in the sink with a little bit of Euclon wash or some Baby Magic and just lay it out to dry. This one is a cashmere blend. It's a little thicker one. I remember that one. You remember? He's worn this one a lot. No, I remember it was $60. Yes. <laughs> so for those of you who want to make sweaters for your dog and want to use fine fibers, um, you can make it a lot cheaper than you can buy it. Because I know um, all of these sweaters, I don't think any of them were under $40. And um, <clears throat> maybe a couple of these were over 60. But I dress Bentley well. <laughs> He's my little boy and I don't want him to be cold. So anyways, so I thought, well, I'll learn how to make a dog sweater of my own. So what I did on this pattern is it starts at the bottom here. And it starts with ribbing on the bottom and then it work, goes all the way up. And if you can see, there's rib, a slip stitch on the edge and it's uh, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. 
for the edging so that um, it has a nice stable edge. And I got that from these actual patterns. Do you see how they all have that too? Isn't that cool? So I just took, when I wanted to make something new, I took what I had in the cupboard and said, how did they make it? <laughs> and then I made mine um, accordingly. So on the sweaters, um, the belly band, the only thing you have to remember with your dogs is little boys need to have it up a little bit closer to the legs because you don't want them to piddle on it. And um, the leg openings have slip stitches on them and it's ribbing so it fits really nice in the tummy area. And actually on these sweaters, if you look at them, they they decrease stitches up in here. And it looks like they decrease one, two, three, four, five, six, about every seven rows or so. But what I did on mine is because I was making this for Chloe and she's kind of big, I increased here. And what it did, it gave more room for the chest area. And she's kind of big chested, isn't she, Jim? She's a cavalier. My cavalier is kind of a chunky monkey. <laughs> she, whenever, Jim always takes him for a walk every night and she always tries to, shall I say, hide. Yeah, she's like, forget about me. I don't want to go. Yes, you, yeah. You don't see me, and she's laying in daddy's chair trying to pretend that she's invisible. <laughs> but anyway, so she's kind of wide. So what I like about this design too is you can kind of try it on as you go and make changes. And what I did for the top on the ribbing, on the last part of the ribbing, I jumped up one needle size so that um, the ribbing at the top was nice and loose. And then I just bound off in pattern. And um, it, the I've made this sweater quite a few times. Now you used Magic out, Loop, right? right? You used yeah, Magic Loop. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to talk about today too, is the Magic Loop method. And I don't know, for those of you out there, some people may not be familiar with what that is. And it is, um, it's not a special needle. It's just a circular needle with a long cord. And my favorite lengths for Magic Loop are a 40 inch or a 47 inch. And here is a pair of uh, mittens that I'm doing that is using the magic loop method. And you'll see the loop on the end. And if you use nice needles like the Chowgu Red Lace, they don't have memory. So they won't be tangling. Do you see how nice and straight they sit? So that is another trick. If you're doing magic loop with a nice long cord, make sure it's a cord that you can be friends with. I mean, if it's a cord that's wound around in a million places, you're gonna continuously be fighting it. But if it's a nice, straight, long, even cord like this red lace, you won't be fighting it. And then when I knit along here, I would go, where is my working yarn? That's how you identify where your last stitch was because you use your working yarn to knit with, right? And then I would take that, where that working yarn is, and pull it out and then come around. And you'll see that two loops will be forming. So that's the way I would do that. But I'm not, I'm gonna show you on a different sample, Jim, because this one is a little more tangled up than I'd like. So I'll come around here and see if we can use this magic loop method just to knit a little bit so you can see what it's like. And what can you use this for? You can use this, say you're making a hat. I'm sorry, can you grab the hat for me? So say I have, to do a hat, um, people's normal person's head is anywhere from 20 to 22 inches wide, and babies' heads, of course, are smaller, and um, some men have bigger heads, but traditionally, a 16-inch needle is what you wanna use if you're not gonna use the magic loop and you're just gonna knit in the round, meaning there's no loop, it's just the exact, um, a diameter of the um, hat itself so you can use a 16 inch needle but how many times have we been knitting and we go I have I need a number six 16 inch and you don't have it well if you have a number six in a 40 or a 47 inch you can use this magic loop method to make your hat and then it works just as well it's more it's a little more versatile with the larger cords be because you can use the magic loop with the 40 or 47 inch cord and you can knit a sweater using the magic loop method and then if you wanted to you could try it on flip it over your head and try your sweater on if you're doing one of those top down sweaters and you like to try it on as you go to make sure and adjust anything that might need to be adjusted for you then you can do that 
um, but this 40 to 47 inch cord gives you a lot of flexibility. You can use it to make socks, of course. You can use it to make mittens, like I showed you over there. You could use it to make two dog sweaters at once. If you have two dogs that are about the same size, you can actually knit two dog sweaters at once in the round using this method. And I've done two baby sweaters at once, or I've also stacked up, um, if I had twins, that I, I made two baby sweaters, on the needle at once and then I also made four booties four individual booties at once so that the booties were exactly alike for the twins and so um, that that's just an example of what you can use this magic loop method for and like I said the magic loop method is not a needle it's just a technique of knitting so when you're knitting and you're knitting in the round and you're using the magic loop method or even just using a 16 inch needle you have your work closed so the good side is showing if you're ever knitting on the inside of your work that's not good sometimes patterns will have you do that on purpose but for the most part they do not have you do that so you once again if you put your work down and you say you pick it up and you go where am I you look for that working yarn and that's the last stitch that you knit because each stitch involves using a loop of yarn from your working yarn or the skein of yarn that you're working with right so on these socks when we start the um, socks and we're knitting them we go ahead and go across the front of sock one why don't you go and, slow so they can see it well <clears throat> it did they, they don't need to watch me okay. knit I don't think most people know how to knit right um, I'm just showing them the technique and um, Anyway, um, using this magic loop method is really nice. Also, when you're think about when you're knitting a hat. If you're knitting a hat and you're using a 16-inch needle for the top of your hat, when you get to the decreases at the very top of your hat, trying to do decreases on a 16-inch needle, I, I do it on occasion, but um, it's kind of a bear. It's kind of a pain in the nose because it starts getting um, to where you have to stretch your stitches as... Um, there's less and less stitches on your needles you have to stretch it and you don't want to make your work look sloppy because you've tried to stretch it further than it should be stretched so if you use this magic loop method you can you you can knit with two stitches or you can knit with 202 stitches doesn't really matter and so and nothing will ever get stretched if you look at these needles that I'm using right now these are called carbons and they are wonderful needles um, they're made of carbon fiber, fiber with metal tips on them, and they have the characteristic of a lace needle. They have a fairly pointed tip on them, um, but what I like about the uh, carbon fiber is carbon fiber feels warm on your hands, and it's not quite as slippery as metal. So for those of you who like knitting with wood needles um, but want to try the Cadillac of a knitting needle the carbons are might be a, a needle you should look at they're really super nice I like them I like the tip they're really multifunctional um, the tips are just about right not too pointed and not too um, blunt the blunt tip sometimes is hard to get under the stitches and the really pointed needles if you're like me and you knit a little bit tight you can actually get a hole in your finger if you knit a lot like I do um, and then you have to be concerned about that hole in your finger because every time you hit it it feels like someone poked you with a pin so now I'm ready I've knit these the front of sock one and the front of sock two now I'm gonna turn my work because I can't knit where my working yarn is because that's where my last stitch was and then I would go ahead and slip my needle into position to work the back side of sock two and then the back side of sock one. So it's pretty cool the way you can do that. So I just brought that around there and pulled my needle out from where this working yarn was. That's how I know which one to pull out. And then this needle, of course, is scooting, scooted into knitting position so that I can begin knitting my project. Now when you, if you saw me when I, let me back up and show you this. When I go around this corner right here, where a lot of people will have problems is that they, they leave that really wide like that. So let me show you how I address like that. And it actually calls, it causes what's called a ladder. And sometimes when you first learn to use the magic loop, you might create ladders. But the way that you 
prevent ladders is on that first stitch. I let the stitch go back to the back needle. Just let it fall back there. And what it does is sucks up the extra um, the working yarn that would be causing the ladder. And you don't want any ladders because they're just unsightly. Now, you have to be careful when you do that not to pull too tight because what you don't want to do is you don't want to tighten up that back stitch too much because then you could get a pucker in your work um, from having it actually, the stitch behind it be a little bit too tight. So it's all in trying to get your tension about the same as the tension that you're knitting with without getting it too tight or too loose. Um, too tight causes a pucker, too loose causes um, ladders, and we don't want ladders. So, but I love using the magic loop method. If you have, if you're new to knitting, this might be something for you to try. Now, there's a lot of you out there that have been knitting for years and years and years, and you've gotten used to your double points. Well, I think that you should use whatever works for you. If double points are your thing, and that's what makes it easy for you to knit, by all means, that's what you should do. But if you're just starting out and you want to try a, a technique that, um, is really super handy. This is really nice. I have really come in handy lots and lots of times. Now in the beginning, I'll show you what I wanted to do. And there's tricks that you can do. Like when you're using the magic loop to do socks two at a time, I've been known to mark on either side, pink, 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 and on the other side, blue, 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 blue. Meaning sock one, sock one, sock two, sock two. So that I always know in the beginning, how do I know when I'm, I've done a complete round? Because when you're, you get confused easily when you first start this technique. And that is not uncommon. I mean, I did that too, I got confused. And so for those of you that are just learning, I would say <clears throat> use, you know, uh, try the technique and do use my three, two, one rule. So I do three projects in a row, no more than two new skills and um, practice at least one hour a day. Doesn't that sound like good? And then in short order, you'll be really, really good at it. So see, I've done one complete round now. I started here and did the front of sock one, the front of sock two, turned my work, did the back of sock two, and then the, the back of sock one. And that is one round completed. So doing the magic loop method means you have loops either on one side or you may have them on two sides, depending on where you are in your knitting. And then again, like I said, if you're confused at where to start, don't forget to grab that working yarn and look for that last stitch because that was the last stitch that you knitted. And then you're gonna look to the stitch that's right next to it here. So that is how you do the magic loop method. And it's really, really cool. I love the magic loop method. Don't I use it almost every day, Jim? With yeah. every project, almost, I use it. Well, there are times when I do 16 inch needles and I do hats and that gives me a rest. Um, but a lot of times I um, do do magic loop. And I have also, um, when I first started, I did magic loop with everything. So I got so used to doing magic loop that I could do it in my sleep. And then I switched back to 16 inch needles because it is faster if you just use a 16 inch needle round and round. But if you don't have that 16 inch needle, that's where the magic loop comes in really, really handy. And like I said, we're gonna be providing this finished free dog sweater for pattern for those of you who are interested in doing dog sweaters. Yes, Jim? Did you, have, did you use the magic loop on the sweater here? Did you use I, it yes, this? I did. When I start here, I knit up to here and it was done um, flat using my larger needle. I used one needle for the whole thing, right? And then I joined in the round and did this. Then I put this on scrap yarn and did my leg holes all the way up. Then I left that on my needles while I knit back and forth doing the front of the chest area. And then I went back in the round and did, completed it by doing the magic loop method again. So it's really cool. And um, the Magic Loop is, I, I just can't recommend it enough. It's a great, great skill to learn. 
but you know how I am about skills. <laughs> I love learning new skills. Anything that I can do to make my work better or, you know, improve it a little bit by little bit, that's where I'm going. Yep, so you guys don't forget to let us know what projects you're working on. Maybe you can, if you have patterns or things that you really enjoy, or maybe you have some ideas. I had one um, customer, and I'm gonna be doing this pretty soon, where I show them how um, you do increases to make different shapes, whether it's a crescent shawl or a triangular shawl. And so I thought I would talk a little bit about that too, because you guys can kind of just, you know, wing it. If you know how where to put your increases, you can just do a garter stitch shawl, or you can do a stockinette and garter stitch, or you can do yarn overs and knit two together. You can kind of make up your own design. So wouldn't it be cool if you guys can make your own patterns so that no one else in the whole wide world has what you have and maybe give that as a gift? That's really cool. I really, really like it. So, um, okay. So let's see if I can talk about who this was for the winner for this last week, right, Jim? Mm-hmm. And let's see who the prize was. Well, oh, actually, why don't goodness. you show them who the, what the prize is for the, because I, I don't think they voted on this one for Good this one. week. For this I week. Them. Oh. For this week, we have for the, the colors. Mm -hmm. And this one's teal feather, and this is Anniversario. So you have two choices. And this is the 50% merino wool, 50% baby alpaca, hand dyed by Malabrigo. So a green, like, so called green? <laughs> it's called a teal feather. Teal. Teal. Yes, it's teal. And this other one's called Anniversario, which is one of Malabrigo's most popular colorways of all time. I mean, it is one of the very, besides um, Arco Iris, it's one of the very, very top colors. So you vote on that and let us know which ones we can send out next week. This is for the winner for next oh, week. So they would they ask what the burgundies call, call it? That's the Anniversario? Anniversario, they call it. Uh-huh, or burgundy. Yeah. yeah. You can call it multi or teal. Um, either way, we'll, we'll know. Um, so, but I wanted to get back to our winner for this week, Jim. Mm -hmm. And this is Bernadette Klaus O'Flaherty. Congratulations, Bernadette, you won. All you have to do is get in touch with us and you get some of this wonderful Nick Cole. Um, it's by Adria Phil. And this is the long colorways. It's really, really cute. You can do fingerless mitts or all kinds of things with it. it it's a really fun yarn. I have even done a, see, this is what the yarn looks like when it's knit up. It's in a different colorway, but this is a Seahawks colorway. So all you have to do, Bernadette, is give us your address and we'll ship it out in the mail to you. Those yarn, the two skeins are yours. So that's totally awesome. And I also wanted to show you here, this is, I'm gonna be doing a, what, a sweater for Andy. And this is out of Rios, which is a superwash merino. And it's called Fresco y Seco. And I will get a sweater for Andy out of this. And that's Malabrigo too? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be using that one for that sweater. And then I was thinking I might even do this sapphire blue is ultra alpaca. And it's a worsted weight yarn. It would be great in this finish free sweater. And this is the colorway um, that is no longer, I think it's a discontinued colorway. Which is very sad because I really like this colorway. Darn it. Anyway, I could make the dog as a sweater out of that. And Kathleen just posted your brand new free pattern. It's Yay! a free pattern. Thank you, Kathleen. Good morning, Kathleen. <laughs> yes, I worked very hard on this sweater. It was evidently doing uh, dog sweaters it takes a little more time than I thought it did. I mean, I've been working on it a long time, but uh, anyways, I was trying to make something that is easy that is kind of flexible so that you can adjust it to your dog. You know, kind of like we do with the top down, um, the um, no seam, you know, finish free uh, sweaters. That's what this dog sweater is like, except for this one's bottom up. And so it's totally cool. I'm very excited about it. And I did notice something. Let me show you something that's pretty cool about this. So when I flipped it in half, it was nearly, the body was almost just a little less than half the top part. It was like half and half. So when you're doing sweaters, that was pretty neat. So this looks great on Chloe. Um, I tried it on her and I um, blocked it and it looks good on her. I was thinking maybe next time I might use a few more stitches just to make it a little bit wider. 
um, but it looks really good on her. And I think when the weather's really cold, uh, I'm really excited for her to be able to wear that. And I might put the, I might put the legs, the leg openings in it. I might see because um, when it gets really snowy and wet outside, that snow just put, causes snowballs on their feet and and snow on their legs. And so I was thinking that maybe I could prevent a little bit of that, bit of that with the, having the leg holes on it. I should have brought more of Ben's sweaters and showed you some of the cute things that I have. He has pajamas that snap up with legs and poor little Ben, he has to endure mommy dressing him, hug him. Yep. He has really, really cute little clothes. A whole wardrobe. And lots of them, mm -hmm. lots of them. Because when he was little, I'd redo his hair every week and I'd buy the custom bows for his hair. And then he, he got Cushing, so the poor little thing, his skin was so tender and I quit putting bows in his hair because he, he would j it would hurt the top of his head. So I quit doing that, but he's a cute little guy. See the picture of him again? Yeah, he's really cute. So anyways, all right. So in summary, the magic loop is awesome. Don't forget to use that three, two, one rule, which is three projects in a row you're gonna work on and no more than two new skills and work on it for one hour a day if you can and then you'll learn the skill quickly. Now, if you're me, I meant way more than one hour a day. <laughs> way, way, way more than one hour a day. But then again, I wake up at three o'clock in the morning so I have quite a bit of knitting time. I don't know why I always wake up early. It runs in our family because I think we all wake up early. So it's all good. And let's see what else we have here. Um, Yes, okay, so for this next week, I am gonna be starting the Adventurer Cow, and that is by Amba O'Brien, and it's kind of a zigzag, zigzag cowl, and I haven't chosen the yarn yet, but I'm sure it's gonna be something exciting, and I was thinking about um, hand-dyed yarn, so I'll see what I have for that, but you go ahead and join me this next week at 9.30, and we can uh, talk about that and I'll let you know what I learned and maybe give you some hints and tricks about something that I learned. So you guys have a great week and I'll talk to you soon.